today's video, we're going to talk about writing a science conclusion. This is a video for ninth and 10th graders. And today's video is specifically about how to write about errors in an experiment, how to evaluate if that experiment is valid, and selecting future experiments that you can discuss in your conclusion. We are going to be analyzing uh, the information from this experiment where we were looking at the relationship between the depth of water and the percentage of light that penetrates. For the first paragraph of the conclusion, please watch this video here where we discuss what the answer to the experiment was and go and give supporting data to the experiment, talk about the trend, and talk about a scientific reason for why this relationship exists. So just as a review, these were the things that we were trying to include in the first paragraph of our conclusion. And here is an example of what we wrote in that first paragraph based on this graph. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin the second paragraph. So we could start our paragraph with something like, there were several possible sources of air. Now, as we start to brainstorm airs, some pet peeves of mine is I hate when kids say human error or they say I measured wrong. To me, these are middle school type answers and shame on you if you measured wrong. I taught you how to measure, you should measure correctly. Okay, so it needs to be something deeper than that. If you absolutely can't think of anything else, then go ahead and put that but I think you can do better, okay? So I want you to try and think of some things that you would have liked to control, but really were impossible to control. So for example, in this situation, the, the amount of sunlight that is striking the pond or lake is going to vary. And that's something I can't control. I can't control that a cloud rolls in front. I can't control um, if there's a bird flying above where I'm measuring. I can't control um, the, the microorganisms in the water or the algae in the water, the currents in the water. Those are all things that could potentially affect the amount of light that's penetrating in a column of water, but they're not things that I have any control over and happen somewhat randomly. So I wrote, clouds in the amount of water vapor in the air could have affected the reading of how much light penetrated the water. Also within the water, currents could have changed the amount of algae or other things floating in the water above the light reading device. Both of these sources of air could have affected the amount of light recorded at one height to be an unfair comparison to the measurements above or below. However, it can be assumed that these differences are negligible and would not affect the overall trend seen in the data. I basically started with this part, this bullet here. What were some errors that happened in the experiment? We didn't say human errors. We tried to think of things that were nearly impossible to control. And we did mention how it would have affected the data. I wrote that to better control these differences, more than one set of measurements could be taken at each location within a lake and at several places within the lake should also be measured. It would also improve the data to take measurements at many different bodies of water, including lakes, ponds, and oceans, to ensure the same pattern of light penetration decreasing with depths with depth is observed. There were no anomalies in the data set. The points all fell more or less along a best fit line. So, so far now we've discussed the anomalies in the data and 
we have talked about errors. We've talked about how the error would have affected the data. And we've also, we didn't directly say it, but we did discuss how the experiment could be improved. So now we just need to talk about the validity and future experiments that could be conducted. So here's a possible ending to this paragraph. Another experiment that could have been conducted is to collect data at various different bodies of water and compare the data to water in a pool. Again, because we didn't actually conduct this experiment, um, there's some variety in what we could have put here. Okay, but basically you want it to help further answer the same question. If you remember, we had said in this experiment, we wanted to find out how the light changed with depth. So we want to make sure we're still trying to answer that question. So you don't want to go completely off and say like, well, if we fill the pool with Coca-Cola and let's see how the light changed with that. it's That becomes a different question and it's just weird. Okay, so you want to try to stay within the same vein of the original question when you're coming up with new experiments. I hope this video helped you to understand how to write about errors, validity, and future experiments in a conclusion. Please give me a thumbs up and write some comments or suggestions of things that you think should have been included in this video. Thank you. Bye-bye.